Ladies and gentlemen, we are back to space. The Kerbal Space Program, to be precise. Um, before we continue our adventure, let's take a look and see what we have right now. If we go to the tracking station real quick, we can in fact see where we landed our first spacecraft, and I believe that little gray area to the right of the Goddard Landing 1 is actually where we're starting from. So if you ever want to know precisely where our location is, that would be the place. Um, so I thought that'd be cool. You can track any of one of your projects, and flags do count as missions. They can be tracked. Anyway, we want to go a little bit further this time, so we're going to go into the rocketry area once again to build a brand new rocket and to play with some new pieces we just got. Earlier, we successfully built the Goddard 1 but now we're going to build a new craft called the Goddard 2. Or that's what I'm going to call it anyway. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, we are going to begin with a space pod, as before. We want to also have the parachute. And this is where things get new. For this time, we're going to conduct a bit more science. Um, specifically, we're going to use one of these, a mystery goo containment unit. We just earned one of those by going further in a technology tree. Um, and I'm actually going to show you something. Um, ordinarily, when you launch spacecrafts, you want to have what's called symmetry, where you launch a spacecraft that has symmetrical um, weight in it. I'm going to show you what happens if you launch one that does not have symmetry to see what sort of trouble you can go into if you don't. By the way, to check to see if your spacecraft is symmetrical, you can go down to the lower right, I'm, I'm sorry, the lower left area where these bubbles are that look like sort of radioactive symbols. If you click on the lowest one, there's a center of mass. There's a ball right here that looks slightly off-center. Uh, see how the curvature goes over towards the um, the science experiment, not around the entirety here? That's because this is slightly asymmetrical. We can add more components to our rocket as well, actually. Um, I'm going to give it a little more power than it had before, including this brand new spiffy fuel tank, which we just earned. And I'm going to use a new type of... Actually, hold on, before I put this on, there is a new part that we're going to add to it, too. It is a structural piece, a very important piece of your rocket called a stack decoupler. We're going to attach this to the bottom of the command module, like so, and that creates a new stage right here. Um, now, we're going to add that uh, rocket fuel tank right underneath it. So we are going to add a fuel engine this time, not a booster, but a fuel engine, which gives us more control. So the engine is at the bottom, the stack decoupler is at the top, and our parachute is at the very farthest of the top. I can talk normal words. This is the Goddard 2. Before we launch, a couple more things that we can do to add to our, to our science project to make it a little bit more science-y. Uh, we can try adding that mystery goo containment item that I tried to put on a second ago. We're going to only add one so we can show what happens what asymmetry does. What happens when you have asymmetry. I cannot speak words today. Blarg. Um, and we are going to add a couple new items here called the commutatrons. These allow us to transmit data a little bit better. Uh, earlier, it was more efficient for us to just recover the data once we took the rocket with us. Uh, and wow, we're creating a very asymmetrical system here. But that's okay, because we are testing science. We are going to save our Goddard 2 and prepare ourselves for launch. Staging is good. Okay. So, uh, before we do launch, to make this actually worthwhile, I'm going to conduct some science experiments right here on the launch pad. If I uh, right-click the command module, I can actually do a crew report right here before we even start. And that gives us a little bit of science. It's not much, but it's something. Uh, we can actually transmit our data at a 100% science value because we have our commutatron. Um, I believe you can get more efficient systems later on that, like... Sometimes if you don't have communitrons or good communication systems, the percentage is only so high, and then at that point you won't get any really worthwhile reason to do it other than to keep the data. So we are going to start our transmission here. And it's done, as you can see on the upper left screen. Um, since this mission isn't really going to be a 
important one. We may as well just do all of our important signs here, including the mystery goo. If we right-click it, we can do our experiment right here on the pad. And it's not doing much right now. That doesn't give us that much science, but it is still something which we are going to keep on us. Um, that's about as much as we can do for right now. Uh, anyway, to begin the proper launch, we are using a different kind of rocket this time called a liquid fuel rocket. That liquid fuel rocket is going to use all the fuel inside of this tank. Um, if we added more tanks onto it, it would use up all the fuel in them and then run out. Um, but if we put any tanks above this uh, decoupler right here, it would not be able to access any of the fuel above it. Um, in order to launch this particular engine, we have a new mechanic here called the thrust control. Uh, the throttle, rather, I'm sorry. Uh, if we use the shift key, you'll notice on the bottom where that blue wheel is, that the throttle can go up. And if we use the com control button, the throttle will go back down. For simplicity's sake, we're going to put it all the way up. We're going to count. Three, two, one, launch. Right away, you'll notice that we're curving over to the right. And if we don't compensate with that with using our D key, we are in trouble. Uh, so this is already an unstable craft. If you didn't press the D key fast enough, you would be heading straight into the ground, and that would be bad. Uh, and this time I'm gonna aim it towards the water so we can get up some door science. This is kind of a crappy mission, I'll admit, and I'm actually really already losing control of this craft. Uh, oh wow. Wow, 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 okay. Abort, mission, abort. Uh, wow, that was a disaster. That is why symmetry is important, ladies and gentlemen. Um, okay. If we press the T key, we will lock our position, which is not really what we want to do. We want to stabilize it. Ooh, we want to stabilize ourselves. We don't necessarily have to, but it does help. Uh, and actually, if we um, kick off our um, our parachute, that would actually do the job for us. So we're just going to deploy and let this thing stabilize itself on its own. Our, our poor thrust center was doing so well, but... Um, if you don't uh, stabilize your craft with symmetry or stabilizers, you are in trouble. So, important lesson learned here. Symmetry is important. Anyway, we are still safe. Our uh, Jebediah here should have a safe way back down to the planet. And since we are landing in the water, we are going to be able to conduct new science. Um, we're going to speed things up a little bit here. Admittedly, what I'm doing isn't really the most efficient thing to do. This is more of a demonstration to show you what happens when you have asymmetry. Um, we are going to keep our continued ascent heading quickly towards the surface. We can keep an eye on how close we are to the surface by our shadow. Remember, we want to slow down our descent with our um, speed booster prior to actually landing, because if you hit the ground too fast with our time warp, it might actually damage the vessel. Ah, uh, see this? We are asymmetrical, which means that we did not land straight up in the water. We might have had a chance to do so earlier, but because we are asymmetrical, we could do no such thing. Uh, we might be able to do a little bit more science here. In fact, I know we can. Uh, let's see, that does require another EVA, though. We record our assessment of the situation over the Kerbin water, which gives us two science. In fact, we can actually transmit that data with 100%... Uh, science value. I'm not sure how we do that without a communitron, but let's give it a try anyway. Oh, we can't. Okay. So we are instead just going to... Um, let's see. Review report. Right, we're just going to keep that data. Oh, in fact, you know what? I believe we actually just reviewed what we already had. I don't think we did another one. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. We can do, conduct our EVA real quick. This might be catastrophic because we are on board a water-bound craft. Let's see if we can actually conduct any science real quick. We can do an EVA report. A precarious situation above the water. That is entirely true. Uh, we are going to store our experiments here to make sure that they're all aboard the capsule. And we are going to dismount. That'll put us in the water. Uh, while we are in the water, we can do a little bit more, including taking a surface sample, which gives us quite a bit of science, actually. Surface samples are really good for scientific pursuits. So we're going to keep that data. 
Uh, unfortunately, now I don't think we can actually get back on, but we can do a little bit more EVA. In a spacesuit, it wasn't really necessary to get in the water, which is entirely true. Um, we're going to store all that data back aboard the vessel if we can. I'm not sure if we actually can. Oh, yes, we indeed can. There we go. We have stored everything aboard the capsule. But I don't think we can actually get back on board. I can try, though. No, we are in fact permanently dislodged from this capsule because we cannot get back into the hatch. So, we are actually going to call this a mission right here. We're going to recover the vessel. But, because we were not in the vessel, I believe it specifically recovered ourselves. It counted us as the vessel because that's what we were controlling. In order to fully recover the command module that we left behind, we are going to go to the tracking station, pick the Goddard 2, we are going to select it, and we want to make sure that we collect it because that's where we stored all of our science, and we are going to recover the vessel. Now, not bad, 33 science for a mission that was designed to fail. Now we want to do a more successful version of the Goddard 2. Let us, in fact, go to the Goddard 2 and update it a little bit. We're going to call this the Goddard 2.1, which should give us a little bit more more to do, actually. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, perform symmetry so that we can see what sort of benefits that provides. I'm going to get rid of these so we can start fresh. Uh, we now have a symmetrical craft, but we don't have any science on board it. Uh, the nice thing about symmetry is that it also allows us to conduct more science. In fact, if we add two mystery containment units, we can do two science experiments with the goo. Uh, if we press the X button, that allows us for more symmetry. See over on the bottom screen, uh, the symbol turned to a um, yellow and black screen. If we press X, I'll show you. You can take a look and see which is being toggled. That gives us two which is really about as much as we can do given the propulsion that we have. I'm going to plop that down, and we're going to put two more commutatrons on board, about as symmetrically as we can do it. It might not be perfect, but we can probably compensate for the differences. We're going to put that right there. We now have a better craft to try to launch, which we are going to save and now try to do. We've already conducted our science here uh, on board the launch pad, so we don't really need to do that. We can do an EVA here, but once we do, we've more or less lost our mission. So instead, we're going to head straight into space, or a little bit further upwards at least, probably further than we've gone before. So like before, we're going to throttle up, three, two, one, and lift off. There, that's much more stable. We are going to go further up and aim a little bit closer to the water again. Slightly aim towards the water. We don't have to do it too much. A little bit of inclination will put us there. We're going to lock our trajectory with T. And while we're in the air, we're going to see how much farther we can go. Our liquid fuel is almost out. We're going to allow this to accelerate us a little bit further out. We're going to do one of our mystery containments while we're up here in the air. Uh, that'll give us new information. It jiggles as we fly. It's jiggly. Isn't that exciting? We're going to keep that data because we don't really have an efficient way to transmit it with our stupid antennas. Um, at this stage, I think we're good to eject from our first stage. So, bye. And that'll go on its own fanciful descent down to the bottom of our command center where it'll probably land on a civilian. Uh, from here on out, we're going to speed things up because we've seen most of this part already. Um, once we get to a certain distance, we are going to slow down to one, deploy our parachute, and we are going to slow down again. Until we hit about a thousand, we're going to slow down so that our parachute deploys the way it's supposed to. Slow down yet a little bit, I mean speed up yet a little bit more, keep an eye on our shadow.
and we are going to go at normal speed and land properly in the water. Now that we have a symmetrical system, we should have a much better chance of getting back aboard our capsule once we leave it. Before we do, I am going to conduct a mystery goo project here to give us four science, which escapes into the water, which is viable data. I'm going to do a crew report. Now, actually, you know what? I should have done a crew report in the sky. Uh, well, we can do one later on, I think. Um, we are going to conduct a quick EVA here. EVA report was entirely necessary to get here. That's not really new data, so we're just going to leave that be. Uh, we're going to store a couple of experiments here. We might be able to do one more water sample. It's not really necessary, but it does give us a little bit more science. It's three. That's not bad. We've already done an EVA report here, so it's no new data. We're just going to call this particular mission a wrap here by climbing back aboard our spacecraft, which we can now do. Now... Looks like we can't bring all of it. I think if we have duplicates, we can't put them all back in. So we're just going to call that one a wrap. I don't think this particular mission is going to be as impressive. Only 14 science, but that's because we did two missions. We're going to do one more, actually, before going back to our technology tree. And that, in fact, involves the Goddard Mark 2.1. I think you can use any particular mission to do this, but we're going to use the Goddard Mark uh, 2.1 because we already got it right there. And we are, in fact, going to conduct a quick EVA of all things right here. Um, we're going to dismount. Hopefully the fall won't hurt us. Uh, we're a Kerbin. We can take it. Uh, we're going to conduct an EVA here. They give us 2.4 science. We're going to take a surface sample of the launch pad, which gives us 9 science. Uh, let's see, we can't really do anything else because we can no longer return to our spacecraft, so that is a very quick mission that we have now succeeded at doing. They gave us 11.4 11, uh, 11 science, which is about as much as I feel like I'm ready to do here. We're going to go back to the launch pad, and by recovering the Goddard 2.0 that we didn't launch. And, let's see, let me just make sure that that actually worked. Yes, it did. So, that's about as much work as I want to do with the Goddard 2.0, or 2.1. We can go back to our technology tree here and advance ourselves a little bit further, actually. Um, we have a couple more options down here, including the general rocketry, the stability, the flight control, which gives us um, a couple more things we can do here, including an incline reaction wheel and a Sputnik space probe. But, in fact, I want to focus on more science, so we are going to go to the science tech tree, and uh, we are going to grab a couple new things, including a science junior, which is a new science project, science, 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 a battery pack, which gives us a little bit more energy, and a communications antenna, which is an improvement over the current one that we use. We are going to select that science. We can do no further, further options on this tree, but we can now do more experiments. So, until then everyone, until our next endeavor into the rocketry world, this is Ardwick of Annette. Stay tuned, and good night.